Would you please stand? <coughs> Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. The Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. The Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. The Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. The Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. You shall not steal. Amen. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. You shall not cover anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done for the land. We have not loved you in our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sincere, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, have mercy on us. Forgive us from all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. A very good evening to you all and welcome to Calvary. It's great to be together at the end of, well, towards the end of this beautiful day. What an incredible day the Lord has blessed us with. Um, if you are new here, a, a very warm welcome to you. Maybe you're new to Golden. Perhaps this is your first time at Calvary. Um, Bethany's just sorting out the microphone. I, I could tell some of you are wondering what she had lost on the floor. <laughs> She realized that the microphone for the live stream was not set up properly. Um, yeah, um, if you're new here, um, we do have some welcome cards in the backs of the pews. Um, I'd encourage you to fill that out if you've not already done so. Give us your name um, and some way to contact you, phone number, email, and we'll be in touch to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, there's really only one announcement to make, and that is that tomorrow at 5 p.m. up in the Great Hall, we're having an extra worship service for the season of Lent, um, and it's a Teze worship service. Teze is a community, a Christian community in France, um, and out of that community has come uh, a worldwide worship movement. Um, and uh, the, the worship is really quite beautiful. Uh, it uses scripture, 
uh, uh, prayer, moments of silence for reflection, and some beautiful um, melody with, with words uh, for singing. So if you'd like to come to that, uh, 5 p.m. in the Great Hall tomorrow afternoon. I wonder if anybody has a birthday. We would love to pray for you. Do you have any birthdays this week? Okay, I've got a long list here of folks in the Calvary community. On Monday, Becky Buckley and Adam Hall. Tuesday, Victoria Franco, Anna Galland, Jim Hill, and Ian McDonald. On Wednesday, Taylor Carroll. On Thursday, Jordan Ziegler and Elena Nassim turn six years old. On Friday, next Friday, Rebecca Hitch turns 13. And next Saturday, it's Phil Hill's birthday. So let's use the birthday prayer. If you open up your prayer book, uh, the black book in the pews there, either in the front or the back cover, just on the inside of the front or back cover, you should find the birthday prayer. Let's pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrow. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may be peace which passes understanding by the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What about wedding anniversaries? Are there any couples to pray for this evening? Okay, I'm aware of two couples coming up uh, next Saturday Mike and Gail Wise, 27 years, and Stephen and Emily Yoshihara, 5 years. So let's pray for them. O oh, gracious and ever living God, you have created us, man and female, in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessings and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfastness love, they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come and bless us, Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, 
or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in chanting today's song. of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, 
and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God. according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please do be seated. I 
don't know about you, but I am always amazed when I find something in Scripture that I never saw before. The Bible truly is a treasure store. And the truths and the insights and the revelations we find there are precious, whether they are old and familiar or something that we hadn't seen previously. Let me share with you what I saw this week related to our readings for today. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 2. This is one of two places in John's gospel where we are told that Jesus is in Jerusalem for the Passover festival. The other one is in John chapter 12, when he comes to Jerusalem for the last time, just before his death and resurrection. Here in John chapter 2, Jesus clears out the temple. By the way, and this is kind of an aside from the point I'm trying to make, some people are puzzled when they read about Jesus clearing the temple right at the beginning of John's gospel, when that doesn't happen until towards the end of the other three Gospels. Is John confused? Or is he right and Matthew, Mark and Luke got it wrong? Well, here's my own take on it, and I think it's really quite straightforward. Jesus cleared the temple twice. After all, he performed miracles of feeding thousands of people at least twice. The context of him teaching the Lord's Prayer in Matthew is very different from in Luke. Why wouldn't he teach such an important prayer on at least two different occasions? And so I think it's perfectly feasible that he cleared the temple at two separate Passover festivals. After all, it was clearly something he was very passionate about. Okay, so that's the aside. Back to chapter 2 and back to what I, what I think I saw this week. Jesus makes a whip to drive out the sacrificial animals being sold at extortionate rates. He overturns the tables of those exchanging coins of various currencies. And then, and this is where I want you to take notice, verse 18. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show to prove your authority? Jesus gives them no miracle. Instead, he speaks about his eventual death and resurrection. Verse 19, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews asked for a sign and he speaks of the cross. Fast forward to John chapter 12. Jesus is once again in Jerusalem for what will prove to be the last week leading up to his death. It's Passover again. John gives an account of the triumphal entry but unlike the other three Gospels, that is not followed immediately by Jesus clearing the temple. That doesn't mean John didn't think it happened at this point. He just chooses not to describe the second occurrence of something he's already covered. But what does happen is what I want us to pay attention to. Verse 20 of John chapter 12. There were some Greeks among those who went up to worship. They came to Philip with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Now, when they say we would like to see Jesus, they surely don't mean that they just wanted to look at him. They are asking for an audience with Jesus. They may have some questions for him. They are seeking his wisdom. When Jesus hears from Philip the request of the Greeks, he speaks of his impending death and resurrection. Verse 23, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The Greeks seek him for wisdom, and he speaks of the cross. So, what is it that I have never seen before? Well, it's a link between, between these passages and our passage from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The Jews of John chapter 2 demand a sign, and he speaks of the cross. The Greeks of John chapter 12 look for wisdom, and he speaks of the cross. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ 
crucified. The Jews in Jerusalem needed Jesus to perform some kind of miracle, like those of Moses and the prophets of old. That's what they thought would be convincing. The learned Greeks of the day were all about philosophical debate and reasoning. They thought they needed a convincing argument. But Paul took his lead from Jesus. For Jesus, the ultimate proof of his identity as the Son of God was the shame of the cross. And so for Paul, as he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, he centered his message on the apparent foolishness and weakness of a crucified God. Corinth, in the first century, was the center for culture and learning, for sport and the arts, for rhetoric and philosophy. And so the people of Corinth were the respected and the famous of the day. Corinth, if you like, was a city of somebodies. However, it seems that the majority of the early Christians there those who responded to Paul's message about Jesus are nobodies in comparison. We heard this in verse 26. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many of you were of noble birth. If you read on in this letter, this first letter to the Corinthians, it seems that Many of the early Christians were slaves. This is from chapter 7, verse 21. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you, although if you can gain your freedom, do so. But the gospel that Paul preached to them is grace from start to finish, even though they might have been considered by the others in the city as nobodies. This is what we heard. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. Tom Wright puts it this way. The story in all scripture is not that we are God's people because we are anything special in ourselves, but despite the fact that we are not. To the learned cultured Corinthians, Paul's message of a suffering crucified Jew, who is now the Lord and Savior of the world, is foolishness. They think it sounds crazy. To any Jews who might have heard Paul, it was heresy. This is the Messiah? Jesus, the one who was the ultimate somebody, becomes the ultimate nobody for us. So that through his humility, through his bearing our sins in his body, through his paying our ransom in his death on the cross, we might find our true identities. Not as somebodies in the world's estimation, but as sons and daughters of the living God. It is through the apparent weakness and failure of Jesus Christ, through his rejection, suffering and death, that we are rescued and redeemed and set free. What are we redeemed from? What are we set free from? Well, certainly the obvious power of sin, things like addictive behaviors, greed, envy, malice, bitterness, generational hurts and curses. But what about the less obvious slavery to sin in our lives? What about our need to be recognized by others? Our pursuit of fame and fortune? A drivenness to succeed in the world's eyes? To be somebody? Do you think of yourself as a somebody? Then think on Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Do you think of yourself as a nobody? Then think on Jesus, who made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a slave. Of course, the weakness and the foolishness of the cross 
led to the glory of the resurrection. Jesus, who for our sake endured the cross, is now seated in glory at the right hand of the Father. It is as we come before the exalted King of kings and Lord of lords, as we bend our knee before him, as our tongues confess that he is Lord, it is then that we find our place. It is then that we bring glory to the Father. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten to our Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, for through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and from the same man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the glories of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated by the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the hearts. We believe in the love of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn our hearts to God in prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, Kim, for this gathering, and for all God's people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. 
And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may attain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please do share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, 
a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and your life. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sickness of life. Through Christ our Lord. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
this is our first time. the whole choir like go to this it was and then there's a baroque chamber concert it's it's um baroque jazz yeah and it's the same group it's all these musicians i want to say viola de gamba um, i think it's a much bigger and I think, yeah, I, well, I, and I just saw a picture of the Baroque Orchestra. There are about 37 in that, and I don't know about the singers. Well, because I, I, I hung out. I was like, these are my people. <laughs> and of course, I had the sing song with them. And I, they're, they're like, do you want to sing? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to just do my voice still. <laughs> but um, sure, twist my arm. So I, I sang one song with them. And they, started talking, it, it's like a collaboration of these jazz musicians with this group that they always sing together. They're at a Boulder or Long Island or something. Well, I, um, I hope they have a really good turnout tonight. They've got, the tickets are between 10 and 50 bucks. She, yeah, she said that I could, but she said um, she would give us 50% off. I'm, I'm, I'm supporting the live hours. Are you gonna